Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about diabetes breaking it down. So diabetes is something a lot of people talk about. You probably hear about it a lot. You probably know at least one or two people that have diabetes. Almost every patient you take care of will have diabetes. So why is everyone talking about it? It is a top killer, especially in America. And you know, the strange thing is, is it's, I mean, it's diabetes related complications, but it's not actually necessarily the diabetes itself. Um, as much as a result of having diabetes leads to other problems. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is with diabetes, damage happens before the disease even starts, like before a person even knows they but, um you know, before it's even official, like that sugar in the blood um, is going around and it's causing a lot of damage. It affects the entire body. So it's important to kind of keep in mind that um, as much as it may seem like it's just a problem um, with the pancreas, et cetera, this is actually something that affects the whole blood body because glucose is in the blood. And where do you have blood? Everywhere. And, and uh, the glucose affects those blood vessels. And we'll talk about that here in a minute, but it affects the entire body and it can lead to organ failure and death. So it's very important to understand diabetes because you're gonna see this a lot. So let's talk about what is it. So diabetes, and there's two types, we'll kind of break it down, but it's a problem of either having not enough insulin or zero insulin, or it's a cellular problem. Um, and so type one is where you have none or not enough insulin. Um, so no insulin or not enough. And, um, you know, called understanding like why this happens, it's not completely well understood. There's some genetics and other environmental factors and viral stuff. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, you don't have insulin. And insulin is a key that un unlocks the cell so that glucose can get in. Um, and for type two, they can have the same problem where they, um, their pancreas kind of just gets overworked. Um, and it stops making as much insulin as it once did. Um, and then also there can be cellular problems. So in other words, remember, I just said insulin is a key to get glucose into the cell. And sometimes it's kind of like, think if um, there was someone who was knocking on your door all the time and they were trying to sell you the same thing. Maybe the first couple of times you'd entertain them, but after a while you're like, I don't want what you're selling. And that's how the cells get after a while is insulin is knocking and, uh, or insulin's trying to knock and say, Hey, I got some glucose. And, um, what do you call the cells? Like, nah, nah, nah. Like, you know, I, I'm, I already have enough of that. Thank you. I'm, I'm done. So it's pretty much the insulin, um, uh, cannot, um, it's what they call the cells get less sensitive to insulin. In other words, the key that insulin is bringing to the cell is not open in the door. So then what ends up with both of these, whether type one or type two, is there's too much sugar in the blood. And why is that a problem? That's not a good thing. You may think, because I used to think before I understood, you know, what about diabetes, that having sugar in the blood, that's where you wanted your sugar, but you do not want sugar in the blood. Sugar in the blood is not actually feeding the body. It's just traveling and causing damage. So sugar cannot feed the body if it cannot get in the cell. So where I need my sugar, my glucose is in my cell, but if it's in the blood and if the, um, ins there's no insulin to unlock that door, or if the insulin's trying to unlock that door, but the cells are saying no, then I can't get energy or glucose into my cells to feed my body. And so one, a big problem is, is that I'm not getting energy that I need into my cells so that they can actually function the way they need to. And two, um, it also, there's all this extra sugar, it's going around um, in the bloodstream and causing damage everywhere because it's very irritating to blood vessels and nerves and it can cause a host of problems. Let's kind of start talking about those. So some common complications, cardiovascular problems are so closely linked to diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia. When you have um, issues with your insulin, it can lead to problems with your cholesterol. Um, and you don't need to know that in-depth pathophysiology, but it can be intense. So, um, you know, after you start getting things like hypertension, hyperlipidemia, plaques are building up, then you're looking at heart disease, heart failure, heart attacks. Um, and um, of course, like I said here, death. And so lots of problems can come up cardi uh, from a cardiovascular standpoint, kidney problems. So all that sugar goes to the kidneys, irritates those blood vessels, uh, makes them not work effectively. And so the kidneys aren't filtering and it leads to kidney failure, um, skin problems. Um, we cannot feel 
on the skin because what happens is, is that all of the glucose irritates the nerves in the blood. Um, what do you call it? Or go, or the blood supply goes to the nerves, it irritates those. And then you lose that sensation. A lot of patients with diabetes will complain of numbness and tingling, especially in their feet. Um, and so then they can't feel their feet. And so then they get a light cut or something like you and I, we walk around our house, we occasionally get a little cut or something on our foot, no big deal, it heals. But for a um, diabetic, they don't feel it. And then if it gets infected, it gets worse, which we'll talk about here in a second, that diabetics also don't heal. So um, then uh, they can have serious skin problems and end up with needing multiple amputations and other issues because of that poor blood supply. And you have to also keep in mind, it's not just about the the fact they can't feel it, they also can't heal um, because But, um, it's kind of twofold that patients with diabetes, they don't know that there's a skin problem going on because they can't feel it and they can't get the blood supply and things that they need there to actually heal it. Um, they can have eye problems where they cannot see. Um, it's what's called diabetic retinopathy. And so that's also very common. And then they can have immune problems where they get infections everywhere. So once again, part of this is that they cannot get blood supply um, to what they need to because it's irritated from all the excess glucose. And then the other problem is, is that even when they can um, you know, get some blood supply there is that they don't have the same immune response because of their diabetes, they have a decreased immune response. So in other words, Words. Like normally, um, you know, when um, something happens, I cut my finger, my body's like, hey, let's go, let's go fight this thing. And people with diabetes, they're like, their infectious process is like, hey, I think there's something going on over there. Should we check it out? Like, I'm, let's, let's wait five minutes. Let's wait a little bit. So they're not going to have that same like, oomph to go get it. And it's, um, it's because of their diabetes that they have that decreased immune response. So you can see how there's so much working against these patients. So what am I gonna do as the nurse? So diabetes is gonna start with prevention. We're gonna start by preventing diabetes, doing early screening for those that are at risk and trying to um, prevent it from happening through diet, lifestyle and other changes. Um, and then also preventing complications. And so um, we're gonna do this by, uh, once a patient has diabetes, trying to prevent all of these things, I just mentioned all these complications, doing testing, doing regular monitoring, giving education that's going to help them so that they don't have those complications. Um, it's also a lot about management. So I wanna manage their glucose levels, manage their cardiovascular risk factors and education, education, education is key. They need so much education um, in order to um, get better. And we'll talk about the cardiovascular risk factors and health here in a minute. So self-management of diabetes is key. They have to be able to take care of themselves or have someone who can help them to care for themselves. They need to know how to check their blood glucose. They need to know what's normal and what's sign of a problem. So in other words, they need to know when's my blood sugar low and when it's high. They need to know how to manage their health on a regular basis, doing regular dental visits. They're gonna be predisposed to dental infections and problems, so they need to have regular workups. Regular labs, so testing to see what's my hemoglobin A1C, um, what are my, uh, how are my blood glucose, how have they been over the past few months? Um, what do you call it? Um, and regular testing to make sure that they're not experiencing any complications like regular kidney function testing. It's, um, we test for albumin in the um, urine to, um, every year in patients that are diabetic in order to see if they're having trouble filtering um, out of their kidneys. They also need to know how to manage their diet and exercise. They need to know when to eat, what to eat and how much to eat. And same with exercise. They need to know with exercise, when do they eat? Do they eat before they exercise or after they exercise? They need to know what to eat before and after exercise, how much to eat before and after exercise. Um, when is it safe to do exercise? What do I need to check before I exercise? Um, and um, you know, what are the signs that, that stuff's going well and what are their signs that there's a problem? So general treatment um, is going to be, you know, because of the fact that, um, you know, especially for type one diabetic, well, only like for type one diabetics, they're missing insulin 
what are we going to need to replace that with? We need insulin because they're missing that. That's what we're going to get. Or if we're having problems with their cells, we're going to need insulin or we're going to need medications to help get glucose into the cell or make insulin work better. So remember insulin's that key to get glucose into the cell. And sometimes that, you know, it's like that telemarketer knocking on your door. Maybe you bought a few things they were selling at first, but after a while you're over it. You don't want anything else that they're selling. They keep knocking on your door every day. And so um, what you're going to, um, you know, start doing is you're going to need, uh, they're going to need to get a new sales technique. And that's what some of these medications are. So most diabetic oral medications, those would be for type two diabetes um, that, uh, cause remember type one, they have zero or no insulin uh, or li very little insulin. So they have, they get have to have insulin. We have to replace that. But type two, they might have plenty of insulin, but it's just not working. It just kind of depends on the patient. But anyway, a lot of those oral anti-diabetics that we're going to talk about, they really help because um, they don't, they do more than one thing. They help the cells to be more likely to open that door for the insulin, but they also help so that you make enough insulin so that you're regulating your glucose in your liver better, things like that. So these medications work in multiple ways, but as a whole they help to manage to have good glycemia. Um, and so that you can, um, uh, you know, everything is better, like pretty much what, um, what has been found for, um, uh, what do you call it, patients with diabetes is that keeping a steady blood glucose lowers those chance of complications. Once you have diabetes, it's really just about trying to manage and prevent things from getting worse. Um, there's some other alternatives for type one, they can have what's called an islet cell transplant or a pancreatic transplant. And then for type two, um, you know, or type one possibly, but I would, I would say it's more likely with type two because type two is more associated with obesity and other issues. They can have bariatric surgery um, in order to help to uh, manage some of the other complications that can come with diabetes, obesity, and things like that as well and manage their blood sugars better. So um, this is really just a start. There'll be other PowerPoint videos to watch and to look over. Um, diabetes is a big topic, but it's very big and also very important that you understand so that you can take good care of these patients and provide safe and effective care. Thanks for listening. Talk to you later.